Okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to our RCG Colombia webinar series. Today we have uh, the talk Effects of SNPs on the Protein Structure and Dynamic by Juvenal Josa. Juvenal is, uh, is uh, uh, he, he holds a bachelor in chemistry from Universidad Hospital in Bogota, Colombia. And he's a, a master in, in biology from Universidad Javeriana in Bogota. And he holds a PhD in chemistry from University of Basel in Switzerland. Now, Juvenal is the group leader of the Molecular Simulation and Bioinformatics Lab at Universidad Simón Bolívar in Barranquilla, eh, Colombia. So thank you, Juvenal, for being here with us. And please go ahead with your talk. Thank you. OK. Um, I will share the screen, right? Yeah, please. Okay. Just one minute. All right. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So I, I will try to go through this presentation to this. Uh, um, so, sorry, can you please, yes? can, can you please switch to the mode presentation to the, of your to slides? The, uh, okay, wait. Yeah, you know, like that. It's okay now. Hello. Yeah, it's okay. All right. So I will try to go through this uh, project uh, more um, about the technique that we use, uh, just in case uh, uh, you can uh, go through this uh, kind of uh, computation and simulation. So uh, what uh, we are doing here is just to try to see what the effect of SNPs in the protein uh, dynamics and structure. Uh, this is a very, this was a very long project since uh, three years ago, starting with uh, experimentation. It uh, takes like 30 patients with uh, breast cancer and they evaluate uh, something that I will tell you later. So let me just give you a small introduction about it. Uh, <clears throat> in the case of breast cancer, uh, the, the drug that uh, is more effective is tamoxifen, that is the one you can see there. And tamoxifen is a prodrug. Prodrug. Prodrug means uh, that the body transfers the original drug, and the um, result of of this transformation is another compound that is uh, the one that it will be the effect on the body. So tamoxifen will be transformed by this enzyme, cytochrome P450 uh, to D6 to, into 4-hydroxytamoxifen. It's just uh, hydroxylation in one of the rings of the, of the compound. Uh, uh, so, sorry, Juvenal. Yes? I think that it's not possible to see the slides. Are you in the first? Are you still in the first slide? No. Okay, please. Uh, it's because I don't know what happens, but it's not possible to see. Okay, now. Now it's okay. Now it's okay. Yeah. So I if can you, go. if you can please, uh, yeah, please the, the the mode presentation. The small, without. What I mean? Now, now it's okay. Now it's okay. Uh, please. Uh, go so ahead. I. What I was saying is that uh, tamoxifen is a product used in, 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 in breast cancer patients. So it will transfer by the body uh, into 4-hydroxytamoxifen 
uh, by this enzyme in the liver cytochrome P450 to D6. So what tamoxifen uh, done is that reduce the risk of early stage hormone receptor possible breast cancer coming back after surgery and other treatments, shrink large hormone receptor positive breast cancer before surgery, treat advanced stage hormone receptor positive breast cancer including metastatic, metastatic uh, breast cancer and reduce the breast cancer risk in um, patient with high risk of developing breast cancer. So this is a very important drug for, for, this, um, for this specific cancer. It, it, uh, the 4 hydroxytamoxifen, it will, the, the action, it will be in the, um, uh, basically it go to the um, positive uh, hormone receptor. <clears throat> so, uh, this is the enzyme that transforms the tamoxifen. You can see that, you can see this um, slide. Next one. No. No, it's let me do to see now. Yeah, now. Yeah. It's okay. Right? Okay. This is yeah. the enzyme, this is the cytochrome. You can see that it's a um, redox uh, reaction. As, as I showed you before, uh, it's just add um uh hydroxyl group in in one of the ring of the tamoxifen so the enzyme uh, is pretty much important in the metabolism of xenobiotics in the body and in particular this enzyme is responsible for the metabolism and elimination of approximately 25 percent of whole clinic drug usage in the market right now so it means that um uh, this this enzyme is pretty much important for 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 the body. So this is the reaction, and uh, this is what happened with this enzyme. Uh, it, it had very uh, different uh, alleles forms, and these uh, allele forms is um, because um, a change in the DNA. So this change produce a different phenotypes of the enzyme that I will show you later. Uh, basically, you can, you can see the, the, the next slide, yes? Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, when I, uh, people are told me that it's impossible to see in the presentation mode. Please press the, uh, the, the reproducir, you know, the reproducir uh, mode, reproduction mode. Man. This one is okay. Yeah, I think that is okay. Yeah, I think that is better. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, I'll tell you that the, there are different alleles formed from this enzyme. So it basically a change in the DNA. Uh, it has a lot of SNPs. And um, I will tell you what, what the phenotypes for these SNPs produce. So the one is the poor metabolizer. It means that there is a little or not function for this enzyme. And this is the, as, as I show you here, this is the more dangerous one because uh, in, in, in this case, um, the enzyme doesn't work, work uh, fine. So this is the, another phenotypes. This is the intermediate metabolizer. And this metabolized drugs are the rated somewhere between the poor and extensive metabolizer. So this, these three are, let's say, uh, less, um, I have to say it, um, dangerous than this one. So the, the next one is the extensive metabolizer, which is a normal function. And this is then the, the normal uh, allele form, the, which uh, represent um, the more part of the population. And this one is the ultra rapid metabolizer. And this is because um, the body generates uh, multiple copies of the enzyme. So for this tree, 
you can change the um, amount of drug that the patient can take but this one is the more dangerous one so we are, are interested in this one because we try to see uh, what's going on inside inside what happened with this SNP uh, to produce this um, phenotype so let me just show you some ligands um, that interact with this enzyme, some substrates, for example, antipsychotics, uh, analgesic, and drugs for high blood pressure, and of course, the tamoxifen. This is just some examples. And these um, are in inhibitors from, from this enzyme. It's Prozac and more important cocaine, so that's 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 an important point here that you cannot uh, combine these two kind of drug because uh, it will um, take a, a, a very high. Um, I mean, the, the inside dot will will not work with this <coughs> with these drugs. So if you, for example, are taking drug for high blood pressure, and at the same time some antiarrhythmic medication, it won't work the high pressure one. And these one are inducers like haloperidol and some antibiotics and some allergics. So as you can see, uh, very much important um, enzyme for 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 the drug that you are taking. So we are focused on tamoxifen, right? So, as I show you before, we have poor metabolizer, intermediate, extensive. And we are uh, focused on the poor metabolizer. So let me just show you some statistics about this um, uh, enzyme. And basically, the race is a factor in the occurrence of the of the enzyme variability. For example, in white American people, poor metabolizer is approximately between six and 10%. So it's very high rate for, for white population. And this is important because uh, you need to do a kind of um, genetic uh, screen to see these um, genes because this is very high uh, population for poor metabolization. Uh, in Asian people, poor metabolism is approximately 2%, and African Americans is more than 10%, but in Colombia, in Colombian people, they are not studied. So, uh, in Javeriana University, together with uh, National University and San Ignacio Hospital, they try to um, a star like a prototype study for 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 this population so initially they took 38 patients you can see here the institutions that are involved in in this study 38 patients uh with breast cancer with the the, the treatment was with tamoxifen so these 38 patients uh, two of them show this phenotype so and i will talk about of about these uh, two patients with this poor metabolizer phenotype. So let me just show you the patient one. It had these SNPs. Uh, arginine will change by cysteine in this position. Proline will change to serine in this position. Serine will change to turin in this position. So as you can see here, this is the mutation, the SNPs that uh, find in this patient. And you can see that it's very far, very distal from, from the active side. The active side is, is here. So the patient does has this um, mutation. It will change serine by threonine in this position, proline by serine in this position, glutamate by lysine in this position, and Important one, there is a del uh, deletion in this position. And here there is a SNP, which is, which is very um, uh, 
uh, important uh, this glutamate for example chain by lysine means that glutamate chains uh, which is um, negative it has a negative charge changed by a positive charge but again these mutations are uh, distal from the uh, active side right you can see the um, the slides right hello yes yes it's okay okay so this is important because one can one can see that is the mutation is close or um, be part of the of the active site uh, you can say well it's 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 um it's a problem in the in the reaction the reaction cannot take because obviously it's in the in the active site and and that's it the problem is is is, is solved but in this case the mutation are, are distal from the from the active side. Uh, how we solve this problem? I think this is a video. So, yes. <clears throat> uh, so, we, we didn't see uh, any problem in the structure, so we decided to um, perform a molecular dynamics. And we did amber 15. The thing in amber 15 is that you can run this molecular dynamics using GPU graphic cards. So which is pretty cool because it will um, uh, get fast with the calculation. So we uh, collect the heme. You can see the heme molecule in the active side and the the little problem with this heme is that we need uh, parameters to run molecular dynamics. And these parameters, fortunately for us, we show in this paper that you can see here. And it's, uh, it's a nice paper that uh, they reproduce pretty nice um, simulation using these parameters uh, for the heme group. So what we did just take the, this parameter for the heme group um take it in the topology file and then with the structure we use uh, this uh, force field ff 14 sb and then we put all together in a water box as you can see here yeah there and we run the simulation to 310 uh, kelvins uh, using a mpt ensemble and we ran it for 400 nanoseconds, six times. So it means that it was like 2.4 uh, microseconds in total. Uh, go back. So once the simulation was done, we tried to see what's going on with all the structure. Let me just call the um, the allele form, uh, which is uh, normal, let's say, for 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 the common population, and I will call mute one for patient one and mute two for patient two. What I what I'm doing here is just to compare the two structures uh, after running the 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 dynamics. We just take uh, an average structure for each one, so we we run. 400 simulation for this one, nanoseconds, sorry, 400 nanoseconds simulation for this one, 400 nanoseconds uh, simulation for this one and for this one. Then we take the average structure and we align the three structure. What we can see, uh, what we want to see is that those simulation can affect the, the active side. And as you can see here in this video, the active side is very much conserved. So these um, SNPs, this mutation, uh, does not have any effect over the active side. So the problem is different. Problem must be uh, the dynamics because the structure looks quite similar. So this is an alignment of structure one 
uh, the allele, the normal allele form one asterisk with the mutation. And you can see that both of them are quite similar. This is an average structure from the whole simulation. Both of them in the structure are similar, they don't change too much. And this is for the normal one and mutation two, the patient two. We should change a little bit in this red part here, and I will show you what's going on in there. But uh, it doesn't look that changed too much. I mean, it changed here because we have a loop here, but as, as you can, uh, as, you, as you know, uh, this loop is very mobile in the in, in proteins. This uh, kind of secondary structure. So then one can uh, compute fluctuation. As, as you can see in the equation, you go through every frame in the structure and compute uh, the um, square difference between uh, a, a structure in, in one frame minus the <clears throat> average structure. So at the end of the day, with the root mean square fluctuation, you will uh, obtain a kind of how the structure fluctuates from the average structure. And more important, we compare the um, structure from the normal allelic form and mutation one, which is the black one, and mutation two, which is the green one, and we use make a, a difference between the normal one and the mutation. So we can see here in the zero, uh, basically the, the motion of proteins are quite the same, but <clears throat> when it's more than zero, like in the, in the mutation dose, in the mutation two, sorry, um, you can see large uh, deviation, which means that it has more um, fluctuation, more motion in the dynamics. On the other hand, you can see that below zero, like here, it will be more rigid. So in this case, it will be has it will uh, have more motion, and in this case, it will be rigid. So that's the difference between mutation one and mutation two. Uh, this one it will uh, it will take more um, motion than the normal one, and this one will be more rigid than the normal one. So we have a kind of uh, hypothesis here because uh, the motion it will be important. I will tell you why. So I can plot this kind of uh, figure with the average structure of the whole dynamics. The A will be the normal one, B mutation one, and C mutation two, patient one, patient two. So one can, let me just show you how to reproduce these plots here. The color will tell you which part of the protein will move more than other parts. So the red will be uh, will have more motion than the um, blue, for example. So this is pretty much easy to do because you take a PDB file and change the column of B factor, which is, is the more or less the same uh, um, concept that I show you. This B factor will show you how the, the structure deviates from the average in the crystal. And uh, you populate, it means you change this um, line here by the um, root mean square fluctuation that you compute in 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 a frame. So you can do that for the whole, for the complete um, um, trajectory. And I will show you here just one of them. And you can see that um, all, all this part with green and red will has more motion than the blue one. So this is the um, normal one, allele form. And compared with the mutation we have here, that this, this part is more rigid than this one here. 
And this part is, it, it has more motion than this one here. So probably it will change sometimes uh, in, the, in the dynamics of the proteins and probably it will take effect on the, on the um, ligand to, to reach the, the active site. So we have here, <clears throat> This, these two videos I will show you right now. Uh, let me just show you first this one. And you can see the, the red part are the more, uh, that has more effect in the dynamics compared with the normal allele form. And the red one means uh, it will, it, it, it not means the, the, the same as, as here, but it has more motion I just take red for patient one and green for patient. This is the more, the, the part that are affects in the protein motion for, for this two. This is for mutation two. The rest of the protein, it, it can of conserve the same motion as, as the normal allelic form. All right, so, and what's going on? You can see here that, um, Protein or the ligand will need to enter for this part here. And once it enters to the protein, it will reach the active site that is pretty much internal in the protein. So when it, when it reached the, the um, active site, it will, the, the reaction will take a place. So, Important thing here is that the, the, um, the, the drug, it will enter to this, um, to, the, to the pocket, to the reaction pocket, and check that uh, this uh, entrance, uh, it will be affected by this part of the protein, also in here. So we decide to compute something that is called channels, uh, it's pretty much easy to compute. The channel will tell you where the ligand, or where, where, where in the in the protein uh, there there are more um, probability that the ligand will enter. So we compute this channel using uh, this software cover, and. Uh, it's pretty much easy to use, and, and we did for uh, a set of, of the whole trajectory for each um, protein. It means uh, for the normal one, for the patient one, and for the patient two. So let me just show you how cover works, and uh, it, you know, the, the enzymatic model for for catalysis, the, the ligand has to enter to uh, the pocket where the reaction takes place. So you can see here the model in the A, you can see the traditional model for enzymatic catalysis where the A, the log K model. So it means that the protein has uh, a form of the key of the ligand in the B, you can see the induced feed model, which in, in this case, the, um, the protein adopt the, the shape of the ligand. And the third one, you can see the select feed model. So it's quite uh, similar to this one. Uh, the model that we can work here in this, in this um, project, what we adopt was the keyhole log key model. And here you can see that the key is the ligand, the lock is the active site, and the keyhole is the tunnel. So the um, ligand has to enter to the active site, and this, this is uh, perform, forming a, a tunnel inside the protein. So basically, a tunnel that you can see here is something like that, where this is an example, this is not a protein. This is taken from the web page of cover. So the, the ligand will enter to the protein, inside the protein. You can see that the protein, uh, the, the, 
active sites more or less like here. And this is important because there are some amino acids that form um, a bottleneck. Bottleneck is like a door, like an open and close it when the ligand is um, try to cross to the tunnel. So this is pretty much important. And, and here I do a parenthesis because we also do stuff like like that here, which is if somehow we can alter or altering the, the shape of these tunnels in the protein, uh, you can design uh, some effective enzymes for, I don't know, industry, pharmaceutical application, etc. Et so you can do this just analyzing the, the, um, the tunnels entrances. Okay, for cover we need a prof. We just um, uh, set up the prof to 0.9 Armstrong, and we need a position where uh, the ligand will reach. Um, so this is the position quite close to the iron in the hin group, you can see here, and you run the program. It will run uh, using a Voronoi algorithm. Uh, you can you can find more about Voronoi algorithm in, in in the in the web, but it's pretty much easy. It's like a find the shorter path of finding um, or oh, finding the shorter path in in in, in some problems. In in this one protein, I will uh, the the algorithm will find the shorter path from the outside of the protein to this point here. So. This is the, um, the results of, of computing the tunnels in the protein. This is our protein, the, the cytochrome. And you can see that you have uh, six kind of uh, tunnels where the tamoxifen can enter. We don't know which tunnel uh, the tamoxifen enter, and there is not uh, bibliography or some reports about that. There is not simulation or experiment that uh, or crystal that show us where is exactly the tunnel where the tamoxifen entered to the active site here in the hin group. So in that case, uh, we decide to do um, or compute the whole set of tunnels, just in case, uh, or just analyze every, every tunnel in the protein. Also, it will work with the, the complete set of ligands that act with uh, this protein. So as I show you, you can see that uh, the more effect part in the dynamics, it will take in the red for patient one and the green for the patient two. And you can see that the, um, that the tunnels are exactly in, in that part. This is, uh, this is this, these four tunnels are more close to that zone than this one too, where the zone is this one here. So uh, then we try to see the dynamics, but uh, in, in the molecular dynamics, the trajectory that we got is a combination of several motion in the protein. So this motion will try to decompose, and when I talk about several motion, we talk about um, um, bending of uh, atoms or string of atoms and and so on. We try to decompose all motion in, in low uh, frequency motion, which, which show us uh, motion of uh, a large amount of atoms. So we perform um, PCI and cluster analysis. Uh, PCI is a, is a form to reduce uh, the variables. In this case, we have a, a lot of uh, a structure in one trajectory, and we in and, and, and motion, sorry, and we try to uh, get the more important motion for this protein. So you can do that using CPP track, which is a pretty nice analysis program. Uh, we count. Uh, it comes with um, uh, Amber tools, which is free. Uh, you can install and 
it's pretty much easy to do. I, I show you this slide just to see that there are a lot of um, tutorials about how to perform this kind of analysis. So this is the result of PCN cluster analysis. We, we perform cluster analysis also with CPP track and we use uh, a k-means. So what you can see here in this plot is the normal one. This is the... Uh, so, sorry, so, uh, so, yes. sorry, Juan, I think that your video, your video is freezing. Really? Okay, let me... Are you in, are you in the 30 slide number, number 30? Let me use... And uh, 33. Okay, I think that we are in the in the number 30 now. 30, okay. Uh, 30. And whatever I can do. So my video is freezing. I just yeah. stop. Stop Let it. Me... And, uh, Yeah, please stop and start. Ah, okay, now uh, no. someone here is told me that it's okay. Oh, maybe it's my problem. No, it's okay. Going out. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Uh, Thirty, right? Yeah, wait. The, in, in the perform cluster analysis. Okay. Cluster analysis. So after we, we take all the whole trajectories and perform a cluster analysis and the gray one, mm, in the gray points are the complete uh, set of uh, trajectory for the uh, normal um, protein, normal allelic form and in the color one are the different clusters that the, we uh, locate and I, I wish I will explain what what it means so the PCI PCA1 and PCA2 are the two um, uh, principal the, the two um, first principal components analysis a free component sorry and what, what we can see here is that uh, the motion of um, uh, of some part of the protein with, with large with large part of atoms. So we, we deco decompose the motion as, as I told you before. So the gray part are um, the, the 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 one I told you, this this part here, uh, where where the motion uh, will be uh, or, or, or has any effect because the mutation. This is the the gray part in the whole uh, proteins. What I show you here is that there is a kind of four kind of motion or principal motion in the allele form. A normal allele form, and for the patient one, there is no too large motion as we expect because, uh, as I showed you before, this is more rigid. So, but we are trying to test here uh, that this one has some specific motion inside the protein with this uh, part, and I will show you that it's related to the tunnels. But this one here, you can see that there is no too much motion in this um, protein. So it's rigid, as I told you before. And the patient two, you can see more cluster here in that, that is showing here that you have more motion compared with this one and this one. So it will be more active, not active in terms of that transform faster the, the ligand, but active in terms of uh, motion. So, what 
I show you here is to compare the bottleneck tunnels. Uh, as I as I told you, the bottleneck is pretty much important because it will let pass the the ligand inside the protein, right? So what you are seeing here are the cluster for the normal allelic form, uh, normal allelic form, which is these four clusters, right? So I show you the bottleneck for this cluster and what it means here that this is a closed form and then we'll open, open, and you can see population that it's open completely. So, and the tunnel uh, 2B, uh, let me just rem remind you the tunnels, which is, uh, which are those and those. And it's what, I, what I'm show you here. So in this, this tunnel, you can see that there is a close one and open one. And also here, close one, open one, also here, maybe with more longer simulation, you can see that this population will grow here, but you can see that it's close at some point and open uh, the tunnel. So also here and also here, close, um, partially close or partially open and open. So this is the normal one, and this this looks like a like a door. So the complete tunnels uh, look like a mobile door, where open and close it in in some dynamics, not too fast, just to let the ligand to enter quickly to the active site. And this is pretty much interesting because we analyze the bottleneck for the patient one, and you can see that there is only one cluster, as I show you here, just one cluster, and all the cluster uh, are closed, as you can see here. This is this look like a um, open a little bit, but not too much. But the rest, except for tunnel S, which tunnel S is for uh, the enter of water. This is um, classified for 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 entrance of water. The rest is for entrance of ligand. And you can see that all the tunnels um, are closed and in the whole simulation. So it's pretty much important. And then for the bottleneck for the pouch for the patient number two, you can see that there is a lot of uh, motion here. It's like a open and close it pretty much fast, open and close it, uh, open and close it, but it's, it's more active than the normal one. You can compare, this is the normal allelic form, and this is the for the patient too, with, um, with a poor metabolizer phenotype. So what's going on here? Uh, let me use we, 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 we can see the, um, the whole tunnels here, and let, let's just remind that. And we perform here a normal mode analysis. So this is pretty much easy to do with CPP track also, because you take the PCI, and the thing is that the first two or three components uh, I'll give you the more um, um, large motion in the protein. So with the normal mode analysis, we can decompose for, for this motion as I will show you here. Uh, this is the component one, principal component one. And you can see in the normal one, there is a motion. As I told you, it's a lac lacador. You can see how open and close open and close conservatively. And we go to the um, active side. Let me just show you the motion, the normal motion, uh, normal mode through, and you can see that it corresponds to this part of the protein. Also, open and close it, open and close it. Just as show you in the bottleneck plot, and also there is a, another tunnel here. And let me just show you the 
normal mode 3 and you can see how open and close it a nice tunnel here all right what's going on with the patient one it has the mutation one that I show you here this is the normal mode one and you can see that try to open here something but it's always remain close and this one is the mode two also here it has motion but not too much to open a tunnel and you can see the normal mode three also here try to open tunnels but it remains close and this is the patient two with the phenotype two and you can see large motion this large motion uh, different from the normal one also here in the mode two this large motion <clears throat> and also here it's more larger than the normal one as you can see here so let me just go through this pretty fast and one can do a correlation uh, motion uh, that one get this uh, kind of plots where it's a matrix uh, in, in which you can see in the red one, how correlates are these um, motion here from this atom to how correlate are those atoms? You can see that that has more connection, has more correlate uh, motion here or dynamics. So the important thing is that you can see this uh, empty space of red um, uh, color here, and it's because here are located the uh, tunnels here here and here so it means that it will open here close open and close uh, the tunnel this is the normal one and this is the anti-correlate uh, motion also you can see uh, this part is not correlate with this part but what happened when one performed the same in, in the mutation one you can see that the tunnel now is kind of close because we, we have kind of a concerted motion here. So it will not open never a tunnel here. Also here and and in here, for example, it will open pretty much um, uh, or, or the motion will be not at the same of the of the normal one. And look look for example for the patient too. It's completely different the correlation motion to uh, the normal one. So we conclude that uh, this, um, um, the effect is in the dynamics, not uh, because the active side, the active side remains quite similar for the three cases. This is the normal one, which works perfectly. And this is the patient one. The patient one will be more critically I mean, the probability that the tamoxifen enter to the active, active side is pretty much a low. It's lower, pretty much lower than this one or this one. And here we don't know what happened because this is this looks like a pretty much active uh, door which open and close, open and close, open and close pretty fast. And uh, within the probability that this one also enter to the active side is 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 not. Um, at the same of the normal one. So the conclusion is that dynamics are different from the different uh, allelic form. And uh, this is important for, uh, for example, personalized uh, medicine. Uh, and before to start the treatment with tamoxifen, uh, it will be important for the patient to take a <coughs> genetic test to see this kind of um, allelic, uh, just to, uh, as I told you, if, if the phenotype is different from the pro metabolizer, it will control just um, administrating uh, different concentration of the drug. 
but if it's a poor metabolizer, uh, the treatment probably it will not work uh, for this for this patient. So a genetic profile is necessary, uh, and uh, if you are taking the the the, the, the drug. We published this in, in, in this paper if you want more information. And um, this uh, three person performed all the experiment um, in the hospital and take care of the patients and so on. And we perform the calculation. So finally, this is the person that made the, the, the PhD with this project and uh, uh, we are taking uh, the, the money in the grant from the National University, from the uh, Simon Bolivar University and um, uh, Intelligent System Lab in, in National University. And that's it. If you have any question, we're glad to, I will be glad to, to, to answer it. Thank you, Juvenal, for your uh, great talk. And I think that we have one question from Gustavo. Uh, Gustavo, could you please write on the chat box? I know, uh, he said that it was a, a click mistake. So, uh, questions, please? No questions. So, Renal, are you thinking to apply these methods now to any other uh, diseases? Are you working on that? We were more in cancer. No, this is this is was uh, it was like uh, the first time we performed this kind of calculation. And actually, if one of you are interested, we have a lot of script and uh, and um, software that we made for this specific uh, project. But you can use for any kind of SNP that you want to analyze or you can uh, simulate. So if you need help with your calculation, you can just write me an email and we uh, provide this kind, this uh, scripts, uh, analysis script, and, and running simulation script. Okay, thank you, Juanal. So, any question? Okay, Gustavo, uh, what type of computer was used for the simulation? I will use um. Actually, let me show you here. This one here, you can see. It contains like three GPUs. In total, some like 30,000 nuclei and um, around 40 nanoseconds per day will take uh, using this, the, the, the three of them. But uh, the calculation w uh, were done using GPUs. Okay. Um, any other questions? I think that it's okay. So thanks, Juvenal, again, and thank you for your, your talk.